Good morning um, and welcome to another Coffee with the Editor session and my name is Charles, Charles Brennan. I am the Editor-in-Chief of the International Journal of Food Science and Technology and with me today I've got the great pleasure of uh, Dr. Dwayne Miller from Aston University um, and I wanted to meet with you today, mm. talk to you about your recent paper in IJFST and that's about ultra-processed foods and the good, the bad, and everything mm. else. And we've heard so much in social media and elsewhere about it. What's your take, and why were you interested in writing the paper and researching? I particularly want to put something in a food science journal, and, and IHST is perfect for that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in that, this is a lot of epidemiology. It's a lot of looking what's in the big picture of exposure, but not drilling down in a very objective way of what's in the food, how to solve that. And there's a lot of discussion around sort of ultra processed foods and how the food industry is a problem, how technology is a problem. But we live in big cities, big yeah. towns, and we need to get food supplies at work for, for us. And possibly food science has made food safer, which I touched on the paper, but it's possibly gone to a way that we're taking away some of the, something that's in food, the matrix of food, which is making it less healthy for us. Mm -hmm. And I possibly need to redress that. And I want to look at that through the concept of reformulation and in terms of fortification. And obviously, you know, sustainability, locality, seasonality of food are some really top priorities in the food industry. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're touching on the right thing in terms of there is a need to apply the science and the understanding mm -hmm. that we have in order to make food safer or new, more nutritious. Is, is that possible, do you think? I, I, th I think it definitely is. I think what we've focused on too much in the past is taking things out of food. Okay. So if you look through the 70s and 80s, we we're trying to remove fat. Yeah. And now we're trying to remove salt and sugar. And we're not necessarily looking at the structure of food in terms of the fiber, the protein, some of the micronutrients in there. So we need to look at the whole food when we're trying to formulate it, rather than what we can take out and then just put something that's functional in its place. Yeah. You know, we've got examples with plant-based foods. Yes. Where if we're looking at some plant-based fish replacements, they're very low in protein. So nutritionally, they're not as good. Yeah. And if we extrapolate that across to some things like the yogurts where we use emulsifiers to take out fat, what's the overall effect on our health? And we're starting to see signals in some of the epidemiology and possibly when we're looking at trying to formulate new foods, we need to think about what's the effect of the things we're putting in, not just the potential benefits of what we're trying to take out. So we've had hot topics like alternative proteins mm. and um, meat substitutes and plant-based proteins mm. you mentioned. And now one of the hot topics is um, hybrid foods. Mm. So that, that really responds to that in terms of how you can combine things and, and utilize things. In a food industry situation, how would that be used in an industry, in a, in a factory? I think sort of if we take a step back in the, in the initial way we make foods, I think there's been too much tension between the public health lobby yeah. and the food industry, and it's almost taking the, the tobacco in model that the industry is a problem and can't be part of the solution. Yeah. We need to recognise our food systems are complicated, and the food factory is part of that, a number of actors in the, food, in the food supply chain. And it's really, really important that we get them all to work together. And we're starting to see that with groups. I know in the UK there's the Institute for Manufacturing where you get the food industry to work together with people like Camden to actually yeah. try and solve problems. And that's what we really need to do. We need to get consumers in there, and we need more public health voice in there. Mm. And we need to break down some of those barriers of trust so we can actually have meaningful conversations to solve our food system problems. Then at a factory level, it'll be looking, right, how can we minimize the processing to make the food safe, to make it palatable, and to allow us to get into the cities? And that could change some of the packaging, but then we need to think about sustainability of packaging. And then it's looking at the structure of food, and how we can maintain the structure of food to maintain the fiber in a functional way, rather than just potentially adding something like inulin as an additive, because that may not always be positive in its health effects mm. and we need to then possibly look at how then we test that yes. i'm not sure we're sort of testing some of these sort of functional type foods these healthier foods enough to be sure of their effects it, it, it's good because it obviously will keep us as food scientists mm. in employment for a long long time trying to understand the complex um, synergistic effects mm. of some of these chemicals like you say about fiber and inulin and those th not all fibers work obviously yeah. in the same way and how does that affect gut microbiome and things like that so from a nutritional point of view is there a, is there a real point for us to 
look at that in a much more clinical way? I think what we need to do is the food scientists and food technologists are really good at the structural microscopic elements of the food and getting yeah. those to work. Then we need sort of the, the people in the nutrition aspects and the behavioural aspects to work together yeah. so we can actually look at how that fits in people's diets and then the public health will then look at the data. So we need to work more in a cross-disciplinary way to actually look at how tweaks in one part of the food system ripple through. Yeah. I'm not sure we've done that. We've worked too much in silos. So if you were going to give a, a take a message to someone in industry mm. or someone just out there in the street and, and we're quite close to a street here, um, what would that message be? How would you get that over to, to them in terms of getting away with that silo mentality mm. but also working for the benefit of, of everyone? I think sort of food, so to the food is complicated. <laughs> um, we need to address the complexity of our food system. We need to know that food science has made our food safe. We get less foodborne illnesses. And then we need to work together to try and make a healthier food system. We need to make food healthy for people and planet and not just looking at that bottom line and the profit. We need to work in a collaborative way so that everyone can enjoy healthy food. Dwayne, that, that's a fantastic um, ending to uh, a very brief conversation, but really interesting. Um, I will put a, a link to the paper so that you can download it and read the paper yourself. And I'm sure that there are going to be additional comments or questions. Um, I, I'm sure that they can reach yes, out sure. to you. And um, in the meantime, we can continue our conversation and we can enjoy a, a cup of tea. So thank you very much, Dwayne. Thank you. Thank you.